Hi, today we're going to talk about insulin resistance, what it is, how we can understand it, and how to treat it. And it's coming right up. We worry about insulin resistance because it's linked to the metabolic syndrome. The metabolic syndrome is a constellation of high blood glucose, high blood pressures, abdominal obesity, and also high triglycerides. And that together really raises the risk of other diseases such as heart attacks, strokes, and cancer. So because it's such a big risk factor, we need to know what is insulin resistance and how we can treat it. So in this demonstration, we have glucose, which is demonstrated by the yellow circle, the cells, such as the liver cells, which is in the big circle, and the other thing is the insulin receptor. Insulin is a hormone that is naturally produced by the body, and it's produced in response to feeding. When we eat things, there are nutrients coming in our body, things like glucose and also things like uh, protein can stimulate insulin. But for the most part, we worry about the effect on glucose and that's what we think about when we think about insulin resistance. So in the normal situation, as we start to eat, the glucose starts to go up and the insulin then attaches to the insulin receptor which is on the cell surface and together this is going to open up the doorway so that glucose now can enter the cell and the cell needs this as a source of energy so when the insulin is high the receptor opens it like a gate and in goes the glucose in that once it's done then the body has a source of energy. When it gets to fasting, when you're not eating, then the insulin levels go down. And that's the signal that your body is going to start to use it. Now this is the normal situation. You have a normal amount of glucose inside the cell. There's a functioning receptor on the surface of the cell. And you also have the a normal amount of glucose. When we talk about insulin resistance, what we see is that there is a large amount of glucose outside in the bloodstream, more than usual. Now, this could be due to the lack of insulin, like in type 1 diabetes, but in this situation, we can measure the insulin and the insulin levels are normal or usually on the high side. So if the insulin levels are high, then you would expect that the glucose would go into the cell, but in the condition of insulin res resistance, the glucose simply doesn't go into the cell. And there's really two ways to think about this. The classic way that we think about what's happening is that there's something that is blocking the glucose from entering. Something is causing the glucose to bounce back out. Just like a key will open a gate, we know the key is normal, which is the insulin, we know the gate is normal, but perhaps there's a piece of gum or something within that lock which is blocking. If that's the case, then the glucose is piling up outside the blood, uh, in the bloodstream, but inside the cell, there's a very low level of glucose what's sometimes called internal starvation because there's not anything on the inside and all of it's piled up on the outside. And that's the way we classically think about insulin resistance. What is causing this insulin resistance? And after 50, 60 years, there's no real answer to that very important question. However, there's a problem with this internal starvation paradigm because if you think about the low intracellular glucose and type 2 diabetes, well, type 2 diabetes is a disease where there's a lot of insulin resistance, so there should be very low levels of glucose inside the cell. So people should be very, very skinny because of this internal starvation. But that's not typically what we see in type 2 diabetes. Instead, we see that people tend to have a lot of abdominal obesity, which is one of the syndromes of metabolic uh, syndrome. And it's also 
one of the things that we see fatty liver all the time. So there's really no starvation that we can see. So there's this problem with this sort of underfill or under uh, uh, internal starvation paradigm because it would predict that in this condition of insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes, which is the same thing, you would predict that there should be no fatty liver, that people should be very skinny, and it shouldn't reverse with weight loss because if you lose weight, if those cells give up all their fat, well, how would that make the insulin work better? And the answer is it doesn't. Um, and the solution here is to give more insulin, which is what we've done for many, many years. But the problem is that all of those predictions of this internal starvation paradigm are all wrong. But there's another way that glucose can pile up outside in the bloodstream and still not have uh, this in, and still have this insulin resistance. That is, maybe it's an overflow. If you've been pushing glucose into the cell, pushing glucose into the cell day after day, year after year, maybe that cell just gets overfilled. And as it becomes overfilled, you simply can't push any more glucose. And then you see the glucose piling up outside in the bloodstream. But the implication of that is very different because you wouldn't expect that people would be skinny. You would expect that they would be overweight. And you would expect that they would have fatty liver because it's an overflow. As you lose weight, you would expect that this whole thing with insulin resistance should actually melt away because that was the problem in the first place. Too much glucose, which is activating insulin, which is pushing too much of this glucose inside the cell. The cell is overfilled now. Just like if you have a room, you have a door, you open the door, people go in. If too many people have gone through that door into that room, well, you simply can't put any more in, even if you open the door. And that's the overflow paradigm. The glucose does have an open door to go in, but there's just too much glucose inside that cell already. As you get rid of some of the intracellular glucose, then it should get better. So you would expect that this would be reversible with weight loss. And that is precisely what we see. The solution then is to get rid of the glucose, not just within the blood, but within the entire body. And these would be fasting, low carbohydrate diets, and weight loss. And those things should in fact start to reduce the insulin resistance and Recent research has shown that that's exactly what they do. So this overflow paradigm seems to be a much more precise way of thinking about insulin resistance. One final analogy for you, if you think about a subway train as the cell, you have glucose which should go into the cell when the door is open and it opens because of insulin. If you have people piling up on the platform, not able to go into the train, there's two possibilities. One is that you're going to, you know, the doors are simply not opening because uh, when insulin comes and tells them to, and inside the train, there's no people. That's the internal starvation paradigm. But there's another way to think about that. Perhaps there's just too many people on that train already. And no matter how much, the insulin tries to push people within into that train, there's simply not enough room. That is, the high insulin levels eventually lead to the insulin resistance. And it's this overflowing that's causing that. By understanding the overflow paradigm of insulin resistance, you can see that it's simply a matter of too much glucose in our bodies not just within the blood, but within our whole body. So taking a medication such as more insulin for type 2 diabetes, well, that's simply gonna take the glucose in the blood and shove it into the cell that's already got too much glucose. You can shove in more and more with higher and higher doses of insulin, but as you do that, things get worse and worse because you're making the underlying situation worse. Just like if you were to cram more people into that subway train, at the next stop, things are gonna be even harder. 
And that's exactly what we see clinically. As you give people insulin for type 2 diabetes, things don't get better. Over time, they take more and more and more insulin. And when you're taking more and more insulin for type 2 diabetes, it means your disease is getting worse. And people know this because as they take insulin, they start to gain weight. Why? Because the insulin is just shoving this glucose into the cell and the cell is turning that into fat. As they gain weight, their type 2 diabetes gets worse and they need more insulin. As they take more insulin, they gain more weight. As they gain more weight, they need more insulin. And it's a vicious cycle. It gets worse and worse and worse. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you learned something this week. If you did, you might want to check out some of these other videos on fasting and how that might make you be able to lose weight, get rid of the fatty liver, and reverse type 2 diabetes. And it's all free. It's available. Anybody can do it. I'll see you next week.